Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, my name is Lex Danielle. Welcome, and today's video, we are going to be chit-chatting about seven ways to elevate your relationship with Christ. This is a part two to my last video. Um, that one is the one where we talk about how to become a woman of God, but these are more of the tips and things that I did to elevate my relationship with God. So, with that being said, if you're into fashion, faith, and femininity, this channel is for you. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there. It would mean the absolute world because I would love to have you guys part of the family. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in because I have seven steps to share with you guys. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's go. Take me on this journey home. I don't want to wait no All right, ladies. So our first step is to change our mindset. So when I say change our mindset is the fact that we have to stop limiting God to just someone who sits on his throne in heaven. I feel like so many of us, we don't ever really realize that Jesus is next to us. So that leads me to our second point, and that is to realize Jesus is with you through your everyday life. If he's in your heart, then he should be a permanent residence in your home. Because if he's a permanent residence in your home and in your in your home and in your heart that's going to shift your way of thinking that's going to shift your mindset that's going to shift the way you carry yourself because jesus is sitting next to you jesus is watching tv with you and when i say it shifts your way of thinking it goes from jesus is just someone in heaven to oh that's not good enough for the kings of kings because he's sitting next to me and once you realize that the king of kings is sitting next to you it's a domino effect and you're like Oh, I'm the daughter of the king. I don't take that. Satan, you can't fool me with that. So now that we have talked about the two things that are essential to your walk with Christ, now we're going to get down into more of the nit and greedy of this video. And these are sp more specific things that are going to be in your daily life. But before we jump into those, I'm going to give you one more thing that's going to change everything as well. I feel like all of these really shift your walk with Christ, but these three things are key. So the third thing is have God reveal your weaknesses. I know. I know. That means you have that means you have to be self-aware and that means God has to take an inventory of things. So once God takes an inventory of what you need to work on and what your weaknesses is, what your weaknesses are, you strengthen those because Satan can't keep you as a stronghold. He can't work with your weaknesses. And granted, do not work on all of these things all at once. No, these are steps that are cultivated through a period of time, through a season in life. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed because taking Asking Jesus to take an inventory of your heart and what needs to be worked on is a big step because there might be multiple things that he has to work on you. But as you work on these things, remember, no weapon shall be formed against us. We are the daughters of the king of kings. And Satan tries to pull the same card he's always been pulling. He's going to realize, oh, that's not working anymore. Yeah, I'm leveling up. I'm leveling up. As we proceed with this video, now the next couple of steps are a little bit more easy to do. I say this because they're a lot easier to change in your routine or what you're doing than the last three. So my fourth step is as you're cultivate, as you're working on this, have a secret place to meet with Jesus. Have a place where you meet with him every single day. For example, cultivating a prayer room a prayer closet, a war room. Me personally, I have part of my closet as my war room. One side of my wall in my closet has all my prayers, all the sticky notes. One wall has prayers that I'm praying for, my friends, family, everything. And then the other wall is prayers that God has answered. Because in this journey of leveling up your relationship with Christ, it is going to get hard. It is not going to be easy. Trust me. It's not, but having that wall of being able to see things that God has done, it gives you encouragement. Don't just have a wall of things that God needs to do or things that you're praying about because sometimes that wall is huge. 
And there's so many prayers, not just for yourself, but for family and friends, and you get discouraged. So it's a good thing to have a wall of praise, a wall of answered prayers. Because if you look and you said, God got me through that, then you're able to know and give you comfort that God will never leave you or forsake you. He did that once and he's going to do it again. He's going to come through. God is a man of his word. He's a gentleman. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. You're his daughter. He loves you. Now, my next point is to set out a specific day out of the week where you carve out a specific amount of time for Jesus. So I know daily life can get super hectic. I get it. I understand it. I go to school and I do my YouTube and I'm working on my ministry. Life gets hectic. But being able to set out a day, for example, I do Fridays where I carve out a nice chunk of my morning to him between an hour to two hours because I need to get in his word. I need to get in his presence. And if that means you have to get up early, 6.30 to 7 or maybe 5 to 6.30 to have that time, then I encourage you to do it because this is life changing. There's a reason why so many people say getting up, getting up at 3 a.m. when God wakes you up from your sleep to receive his word. Because if we don't carve out time for Jesus, not just our 30 minutes of our devotional time every day, but a set time to really be intimate with him, he's going to wake you up from your sleep because he can't get you in your everyday life because of the hustle and bustle. Carve out that time with Jesus. Set him as a priority. Have weekly meetings with him. This is probably one of my favorite things that I do. And as you get used to waking up at this time, your body's going to get used to it. So it's no problem. And you're going to want to, you're going to start desiring it. You're going to be like, oh my goodness, tomorrow's Friday. I'm super excited. And it's just a good time to let everything off your chest. It's, it's great. You lay everything at Jesus' feet in, during this time, whether that's worshiping, whether that's your devotional time, anything just or just being still and being in his presence now piggybacking off being in his presence really meditate on his word not just reading it not just reading it because there's a difference there's a difference between reading it and being like okay god what did you mean no invite the holy spirit meditate on the word dissect it how are we ever supposed to know what god wants to wants us to execute or how are we ever gonna hear what God wants us to do in our purpose, what gifts he wants to cultivate in, cultivate in us if we aren't meditating and dissecting and asking the Holy Spirit to lead us when we read the book of life. Because there is a difference between reading and meditating with the Holy Spirit. Because having the Holy Spirit completely changes everything as you read the Bible. This moves us on to our next point. I can't even remember which one we're on just because I've been rambling, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm moving on to my next point and that is fasting, fast. I can honestly say I started fasting for the first time last year on my own. So I feel like we have this misconception about fasting that we have to do it with our church or that it has to be at the beginning of the year. It doesn't, we are called to fast. So many people say, well, I don't feel like fasting. I don't feel led to fast. No, we are called to fast. We are called to deny our flesh. Don't limit just fasting to at the beginning of the year or just with your church. Why would we? Why would we limit our experiences with God? Like, for example, like Moses and the Israelites. We don't need the church to fast. We don't need that middleman anymore because of the new law because of the New Testament. That veil has been taken off. And I know there, when people talk about fasting, it can be so intimidating. There is a proper way to fast, but there's not a proper way of what to fast. You can fast social media. You can fast junk food, Cokes, sweets. There's so many ways to fast. Moving on to my next point. All of this has to be intentional. You're going to have to be willing. Like I said in my last video of going through the process of becoming a godly woman, all of these things are harder said than done, you know? 
You're gonna have to be willing. You're gonna have to prioritize God on that given day, even if it means you have to get up earlier. That if even if it means to get up at 6 a.m. Or even if creating a secret place with you and God means you're gonna have to disrupt your decor, your aesthetic. A relationship with Christ is a two-way street because God is always willing. God is always at the door of our heart waiting for us. But are you willing to open the door to your heart? It's one thing to know Jesus and it's one thing to have a relationship with Christ. Because even the demons and Satan know of Jesus. Take it up a notch. Level up your relationship with God. I know you can and I encourage you to. And I'm not saying that these seven steps aren't going to disrupt your life a little bit. Yeah, because as you get closer to God, the enemy is not going to like that. But there's so much reward in knowing Jesus. So I encourage you to take that step. I know it's, I know it's not easy. But I encourage you to get to know Jesus. I encourage you so, so, so much because He's the Kings of Kings. You lose nothing by knowing Him, but you lose everything by not knowing Him. Now, if you stumbled across this video and you're not a believer of Christ, I have a prayer down below if you want to give your life to Christ. So I hope this encourages you guys to take the step, to take the next step to elevate your relationship with Christ. I love each and every one of you guys and if you're struggling in your walk with Christ, never be scared to reach out and DM me because this is what I love to do. I love helping girls and young women and women in general in their walk with Christ. So don't be scared. I, I will be your sister in Christ to encourage you to tell you to keep going because I love you. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to share this video if you know someone who is really struggling with their walk with Christ. And I love you guys so much. And just know that Jesus loves you. Bye.